Hey, wait a minute. You're not Dave Warnock. Hey, wait a minute. You're not Matt Dilla, honey. Wait, yeah, you are. Um, oh, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I'm so confused. See, we've done a clickbait thing. We advertise that, that Dave Warnock and I would be doing this show, and boom, Dave's not here. So let me address that, that real quick right from the start. First of all, hello, everybody. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for showing up to Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock, except tonight it's not actually going to be Dave because Dave, um, as is likely to be the case more frequently, um, is a little under the weather today. One of the things that's happened recently is that uh, he... He had a fall and decided that it was time for him and his partner to not have to deal with this just on their own. And so we're doing our best to uh, help beef up Dave's Patreon. So right down below uh, in the channel description, right after, you know, hey, support Dave or uh, support the show, there's support Dave directly on Patreon. Uh, I can't tell you how much I've been I've been a a professional atheist uh, for quite a quite a while now, more than a decade. And the bulk of my money actually comes from Patreon. I put up three, four videos a month, um, depending on where we are in the cycle. And that makes sure that I at least am able to pay my mortgage and pay the power bill. And then I come to work here on the line where I, we get to cover my health care and things like that. But I'm doing okay. I mean, I've, I've, I've had my health issues over the time, but I'm generally doing okay. Dave is not. Dave has been diagnosed with ALS, which is terminal. Uh, he's been dealing with it for a number of years. And Dave has graciously been giving aspects of his life, both for the Dying Out Loud brand. Um, and you can go to uh, IamDyingOutloud.org to check out his nonprofit organization, but also living out loud. And Take, I'm just doing everything. I mean, the, the guy is uh, a machine who loves life and is doing his best under incredibly difficult circumstances. Um, we know that we have a limited amount of time left with Dave. So whenever he's feeling better and gets back, I'll come back and do a show with him if that's what he wants. And if he wants Eric to come back and do it, that's cool too. And if he wants somebody else to come back, uh, that's great because it's Dave's show. But in the meantime, we are going to treat this as if it were a mix between the normal Dying Out Loud program, uh, because while Eric and I are both dying, we're not, you know, we're dying just like everybody else is. But the truth is, I could get hit by a bus. I've already had a triple bypass. I could have another heart attack. I could be, and not just one that takes me out, but I could have one where I am stuck, you know, in a bed, unable to speak or unable to, to do the sorts of things that actually keep me alive and make me money. And so uh, our love goes out to Dave tonight. Please uh, consider joining his Patreon and other areas of support because we're trying to get him um, some in an in-home caregiver to take some of the burden off of him and his partner. And so on that front, uh, we have Eric from Skeptics and Scoundrels here with us tonight, who at the last minute agreed to, to jump in and help me out because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. How are you? You doing all right? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, doing doing rather nicely actually. Just got off of work and uh, nice and fresh and ready to go. So I'm wondering. Um, so first of all, it's going to be a call in show, just like every other thing on the line. That's one of the reasons we call the network the line. Um, but anybody who wants to call in and talk about any number of issues, I'm going to treat it like a because I want to where two people are going to get or two groups of people are going to get priority. Obviously, I always give theist priority because I I despite what people think and how terrible a lot of people are at arguing and defending things. I genuinely want to understand uh, why people believe what they believe. And if I'm wrong, like if, if there is some sort of God or something supernatural, or there's some justification to this, I'd love to know what it is. And if all we keep getting are, you know, bad arguments, I'd like to be able to offer corrections to this. Um, so theists will still get priority, but also people uh, who have questions, despite the fact that neither of us are experts, but for people who have questions on end of life issues and things like death with dignity, and um, I, I don't know anything hardly at all about uh, home hospice, but I can, it's very difficult to do. Like if I were to ask you, Eric, imagine that you have been given a diagnosis that you've got three years left. What are you doing? Man, uh, if that were to happen to me, I would probably very first thing realize that every moment I got 
the value of each of those moments just skyrocketed because there's so few of them left compared to what I was expecting. Um, I would likely start getting my end of life stuff in order, figuring out how my family's going to be taken care of, who's going to take care of my dogs, what my friends are going to get, and how I can do my best to help them cope. Um, and on top of that, do my best to make sure that my death isn't an unnecessary burden for people by you know doing proper preparations and, and such. But I think uh, most of all, I would, like I said at the beginning, I would reevaluate what I was planning on doing for these next three years. And I would probably take things that I always wanted to do and prioritize them higher. Like I want to do some traveling or I want to help more people or I want to, you know, uh, make the most of what I got. Um, and I think that's kind of in the broader sense, it's kind of one of the cruelties that religion has inflicted upon us is that uh, we're according to religion, we're all facing eternity. So our moments don't matter. What we do now, it doesn't matter, especially in this life, it doesn't matter. Um, and a lot of people have been, you know, convinced of that and they're wasting their lives. They're wasting the time they know they have for some promise for other, another life that they can't guarantee. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I would absolutely, I would absolutely take every one of my moments and, and do the most I could with it. I've watched um, a, a number of people dealing with issues like this in, in many different ways. Some of them are religious, some of them are not. Some of them are um, skeptics and, and science-minded, some of them are not. I remember watching um, uh, Man on the Moon, the, the Jim Carrey biopic of... Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. I remember Andy that Kaufman. movie, yeah. yeah. And of course, when Andy got sick, he ended up going to, you know, traveling around the world, ended up in, you know, with a psychic surgeon, which myself or any number of uh, magician friends that I have could have easily demonstrated how this was a scam to start with. I love how the movie kind of exposed that a little bit and you got a little bit of a laugh there, but I have, I, for example, there's a YouTube creator that I'm not going to mention by name. I don't want to be leveraging, uh, his condition, but, uh, or his situation, but a great individual who's dealing with cancer and has just reached a point where the chemotherapy is no longer working. And so he's gone off of that treatment. He's working with his doctors on other potential th treatments, but they're, uh, these are things that are, that are not likely uh, to work, that don't have any demonstrated efficacy at all. And I know that this individual is um, nominally religious, spiritual, whatever, and so he's relying more on his faith. Um, I could very easily reach out to this person, have a conversation and talk about how religion is, you know, never been demonstrated any more than the other kind of speculative treatments. Why would I ever do that? It, it reminds me of people, you know, saying, oh, well, if your grandmother was on her deathbed, would you go and tell her there's no heaven? No, because I don't know whether there's a heaven or not. I don't believe in one. I haven't been presented with evidence. But that's not the time in someone's life when it's remotely important. When somebody is uh, sitting there facing a, a death sentence and is and you see them flailing about to get whatever treatment they can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try everything. I understand that. I know I would not do that. I know I would rely on um, the best science and that much like you, I, I try to put my affairs in order, try to make sure I'm not, you know, hindering other people's lives and do what I can to to make my last bit of time um, as nice for me and my loved ones as possible. Would I go on a tour and do a whole bunch of speaking events? If it, if at all possible, you bet your ass I would. Um, if I'm not debilitated, getting a last chance uh, to do the things that I love. I genuinely love having the conversations and I genuinely love doing the events and getting to meet and interact with people and and maybe come up with something to say that helps somebody else and and more often than not finding out that those same people are able to help me in some way or teach me something uh, but if it gets to the point where i can't travel and do that then um, i i would like to make sure that i'm continuing to support the efforts in whatever way i can towards a you know a better world, a more secular world, and things like that. So if you're out there tonight and you think that you would handle this differently, or if you are religious of some stripe and uh, think that your reliance on your faith is such a good thing that 
anybody and everybody should consider doing that. I'd love to know why. I can appreciate that you feel that way, but the notion that other people sh should potentially feel that way too. How does it make sense? How does a world with a God that loves and cares about people, how does that make sense when theists and non-theists, believers in that God and, and people who don't believe in that God seem to be afflicted with conditions and die um, at the same rate? Um, we've had no demonstration of the efficacy of religion. We've had no demonstration of the efficacy of intercessory prayer. As a matter of fact, when you know you're being prayed for, it works less than the rate of chance and everything else is a coin toss. So if you, I, I understand the value of people having hope and even we know about the placebo effect. I think it's one of those things where we like to tell our kids, uh, you can be whatever you want to be in the hope that the placebo effect is enough to allow them to potentially be the thing that they want to be. Um, because the truth is, sorry to break it to you, you can't be anything you want to be. If you're three foot tall and you want to be in the NBA, uh, you are probably not going to be a starter on an NBA team. It's, um, it's just you know a practical impossibility there. But, boy, if you were really good, it'd be cool. If you... Um, are, are someone who doesn't do well at math, you probably shouldn't be an accountant. Um, if, if you're not willing to think rationally, I would hope you would not wind up as our president. But unfortunately, we have a pattern of people winding up as president who aren't the most rational people in the bunch. So on those fronts, if you have thoughts about uh, dealing with end-of-life issues or the intersection between your religion or your religiosity and incredibly difficult uh, situations um, like facing a terminal diagnosis, please call in and talk to us about it. I'm happy to have debates on whether or not there is a God or anything else, but tonight I'm more interested in the people who need or feel a need to rely on religion, whether it's true or not in situations like that, why do you think that is? Because I know, like, I, I can't tell you exactly how I would react were I to face a terminal diagnosis, but I can tell you how I reacted when I had my heart surgery. There was not even the slightest hint or inkling of reaching out to religion or flailing about or, or trying to rely on the supernatural. It was, okay, here's the science. I'm going to go in. Uh, they're going to put me out. I'm going to become unconscious. And then they're going to operate on me. And then I will either wake up or I will not. And doesn't seem to be much of anything that I can do about it either way. So it was much better for me. Um, rather, there was, there was no appeal to, uh, nothing about appealing to religion was appealing to me. Uh, what, a, what a clumsy way to, uh, to get that out of there. We have a couple calls in the line already. And I'd love to go ahead and start on these. And in between calls, by the way, you feel free to call in. In between calls, um, Eric and I will probably talk about a number of different things. If you're in the chat tonight um, and, you're, and you're just realizing Dave's not here, Dave is unwell, but um, we'll be back. Or as far as we know, everything's going to be okay. And within the context of the guy is dying out loud. Uh, but while I desperately miss my friend and I'm sorry that Dave's not here today, I am glad to get to do another show with Eric. So let's, uh, let's take some calls and see what some people think. Yeah, let's do it. From Canada, we have O'Neill pronouns are he, him is a theist, um, but struggling with some, um, some potential deconversion, I think. So O'Neill, welcome. You're on with Eric and Matt. How can we help? All right. I was told that we may end up having some audio issues and I can't hear O'Neill right now. So I'm going to put O'Neill back in the queue just so we can do some testing here. So O'Neill, hang on. Cause I, I do want to get to you. I'm going to try another caller just to see if it's an issue with that one call or as the producers working behind the scenes. So let's try, uh, Tenille in Australia, pronouns of she, her, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. We can hear you as well. So maybe there's a problem specifically with O'Neill's line. We'll get back to that. 
Uh, you had a question that I found incredibly interesting. So go ahead and uh, you're on with Eric and Matt. Hi, um, thanks for having me on. I don't know why my phone's echoing. Hopefully it's not echoing for you guys. I don't hear an echo, so. That sounds good to me. Cool, I'll just, I'll just forge through it. So um, I don't know what you, if you understood what I meant by what, by euthanasia. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if a human is like Ray, who wants to go earlier with medical intervention, uh, basically, I work for a company that is a religious organization that is against that. Mm -hmm. And while uh, we had to do training that said, if somebody says they want to do it, we just have to point them towards like the legal rules. We're not allowed to be supportive or negative. Um, I'm just kind of uh, against the whole company, company stance that it, it's wrong and we shouldn't support people wanting to seek it. So the, the organization that you work for is a religious one, but they're telling you to, if, if somebody expresses that they would like to manage their own death with dignity, I'm, your your instructions from the organization are to neither be supportive nor negative? Yeah, basically not to not say anything and just point towards like the actual the government's laws. And I think that the reason we have to do that is because there's laws against our organization stopping people. Yeah, so first of all, I'm not remotely familiar with the, with the laws in Australia on this. I, I would say that an organization that is ostensibly opposed to euthanasia, um, for them to say, hey, don't be supportive or negating of this is probably one of the better positions I think they could take. But is, um, is like death with dignity, euthanasia, is this generally legal in Australia under, under the right guidance? People have that option as a legal medical uh, option. Yes, I, I believe so. I work in disability for context. Yeah. So my my difficulty here is twofold. One, I, I don't know what the Australian laws are. I do know that Fair I refused to work with an organization that was working for a charity that opposed, actively opposed, um, euthanasia or, or the ability for an individual to take autonomous control and decide the terms under which they're going to die. Um, that was me personally. If I, there are tons of religious hospitals and organizations like that, that have a number of really bad policies. And so if, if this is a legal option in Australia and the organization that you're doing is not following the law, uh, and letting patients know what their legal options are, then yeah, I think that is worth opposing and perhaps seeking you know, legal counsel or talking to you know whatever magistrate authorities um, might oversee that. Fair enough. I should look into it uh, deeper. I, I simply think, uh, bring it up because when we had to do the training, it was in, it was enraging. I think uh, overall, it's it's definitely better to stay out of the way than it is to get in the way and oppose. So while your organization's not, you know, actively helping those uh, with that wish, um, it, at least they're staying out of the way, and at least directing, like you mentioned, uh, pointing. You mentioned pointing them towards the government laws on it, which I would hope those yeah. laws would, you know, or whatever resource you're pointing them to will at least have some information about, okay, if you want to explore this more, here are resources you can go to that are outside of our hospital or outside of the government. Um, so it's, it could be better, but also could be worse. Um, at least they're staying out of the way. So I think that's better than nothing. I will say that's I found fair. a website. Sorry. I found a website. Uh, it's... I'll put a link in chat, but it's end-of-life.qut.edu.au that talks about, or th their opening page says, in Australia, voluntary assisted dying, VAD laws, have been passed in all states 
VAD laws have commenced operation in Victoria, Western Australia, Tasmania, Queensland, and South Australia, and voluntary assisted dying will commence in New South Wales on November 28th of, of this year, 2023. So depending on where you are, if you're not in New South Wales, voluntary assisted dying is already in place. Um, and if you're in New South Wales, it goes into effect in basically two months. And that website, which I'll put a link to in chat, talks about what voluntary assisted dying is, um, the legality of it, and the contacts in your state. So depending on which state you're in, there are links there. Um, and a, a number of discussions about the legality. And so it may include who to contact for, from just a, I'm going to post that link right now. And if the mods can make sure that that's uh, available, but it's very difficult, especially when, you know, this is your job. Do you want to complain against your employers? Are they actually doing anything illegal? It's worth talking to, to a legal expert, especially since this seems to be new. Voluntary assisted dying seems to be a new thing in Australia. And so um, talking to legal experts to say, hey, here's what's happening at the place that I work. Is this consistent with the law? Is this something where we should come in and say, no, 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 no. You don't get to just take a neutral stance. If a patient says, I'm interested in voluntary assisted dying, you have to provide them with the relevant information. I, you, you may not have to do it, or you know, but you have to at least tell them what their legal options are. It reminds me a lot of um, pregnancy crisis pregnancy uh, centers that draw in people who are desperate and recently pregnant, and then don't actually provide them with all of the legal options. Instead, guide them specifically towards you know adoption, etc. Um, so I would definitely check out the the website that I linked. Um, talk to some legal experts you. around you. Um, hopefully that will get you some answers. Now, what you end up doing um, from a moral perspective may differ from what you're you're going to end up doing on a, from a legal perspective. That's fair. It's always been weird being an atheist working for a Christian organization, but. They, yep. I think my boss knows I'm an atheist, and it's never been a problem. Yep. Which state are you in? Queensland. Queensland. So it's already in place there. And yeah, on that same page, there's, uh, there's tons of good information there. If you click on Queensland, it talks about what are the eligible criteria. Um, what I don't see... Ah. Do health practitioners have to participate in voluntary assisted dying? And it says here, registered health practitioners with a conscientious objection to VAD have the right to not participate. They can refuse to provide information about it. They can refuse to participate in the request or the assessment process. They can refuse to participate in administration decisions. Uh, they can refuse to supply, prescribe, or administer. They can refuse to be present at the time of administering. That talks about Oh. Um, a, what health practitioners can do. Um, the next section is do health services and residential facilities have to provide VAD or help a person access it? And generally, it says here, generally facilities must do the following. Permanent residents allow a medical practitioner or other relevant person to access a facility so that the person can make a request for VAD or have a VAD eligibility assessment. And so it may be the case as a health service that you're working for, it appears to me on, on a quick 20 second read of this, that the, they have to allow a medical practitioner or some other person access to the facility so that the individual who has expressed the desire for VAD may be evaluated and make that request as long as they're a permanent resident. And so it may be the case that the, the, hospital you're working for um, might be violating the law right now. Okay. I'll uh, look into it and contact, hop on that website and contact whoever is necessary to look into awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, uh, you know, while it has its problems, kudos to the Australian government for having their act together on this. Um, I saw in the chat yeah. that it's, it's nationwide over there, all the states. I'm not sure if that's a, uh, uh, at a, all the states just simply aligned on that issue, or if there was a federal government that 
imposed it, but uh, good job. Oh, over yeah, there. our states uh, aren't like this. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, uh, it's 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 a terrible situation over here in the U.S. We only have 11 states where it's legal. Um, one state where it's legal under court order and everywhere else is illegal. So a vast majority of the U.S. it's it's currently illegal uh, uh, assisted dying. And it's it's terrible because, you know, this is causing a lot of pain, a lot of damage and um, removes the dignity of those who would rather not have that happen to them. Um, yeah. So good job over there. Good job, Australia. Absolutely. I won't take any credit for that. <laughs> well, you voted, didn't you? Yeah, I vote for all the all the good all stuff. Right. At least I try. Well, take take a there little you credit. You voted. Take a little credit. Just a little. Thanks. Bit. Thanks a lot, Tanil. And by the way, we when you find out an answer, it's compulsory here. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so when you find an answer, when you I, when I you like. get some when you get some resolution to this, uh, call us back and let us know how it turned out. But thanks so much for bringing it up. I will. Thank you so much for having me. And cheers. I loved my time in Australia, and I would. I wouldn't mind, uh, go, I would love to go back. I wouldn't mind actually uh, living there in parts of Australia. Biggest problem I've got now is that I have a, a reptile business where almost everything I have would be illegal for me to take with me there. And uh, the, the thing, you can't import or export pretty much any wildlife from Australia. So you can only, and if you live in Australia, you can only keep native species, which means while I have a pair of um, Australian Wilma pythons and I have now uh, we had a uh, Darwin's carpet python, which is from Northern Australia. Um, these were all captive bred outside of Australia and from stock from decades ago. Uh, yeah. In Australia, they have a, a wider variety of of morphs uh, and genetic diversity within their local species that we will not have access to because you're not allowed to export them. And yeah. so we'd have to start the business over. Um, it might be interesting, but I'm loving, we, we just had seven more babies, uh, pop out of eggs this morning and I got good pictures of them. I'm so excited. And of course, as is always the case, at least one of them is an incredibly confusing, uh, genetic uh, discovery. Uh, th this is, we, we have an, a snake in the egg that based on what we know, the genetics of the parents to be, um, this baby shouldn't be possible and so mm -hmm. we're we're looking into okay did somebody get the genetics on the parents wrong or an interesting thing with with reptiles is that um with snakes in particular they're known to store up sperm for up to two years and they can have oh, a mixed okay. blood so this one baby could be from stored sperm from somebody that bred her before we ever got her yeah but we'll that's take a interesting. Look. It's really fascinating. You should set up a, a live cam or something and get a channel going and just have we, snake we and do. reptile live cam. Oh, well, hey, there you go. We do epic loot exotics and we do live streams of uh, ultrasounds and egg cuttings and uh, new clutch identifications. We'll probably be live at least once next week, if not more than once. But enough about the snakes. O'Neill in Canada, can you hear us now? Yes, sir, Mike. Can you hear me? We we do hear you. Thanks for waiting, and uh, we're glad we got the audio. How can we help you? You you had questions about um, you're a theist who's potentially struggling with it, and um, I'm I think Eric and I might be able to help somewhat. All right. So I am from Haitian descent. You're, you're so what? It's very Christian. Is very strong. And um, slavery to me is the absolute worst for humanity. And my thing is, I, I, I want to, the, the final, how can I say this? Uh, the, best, the best reason, the best opinion on why that should be the the the, 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 the final stay for me to get out of this because so the book says that he created everything 
And when I confront friends, parents, ex-girlfriends about it, I'm being told, I'm pushed away with um, people do bad things. And it, it, God doesn't do bad things. So, well, that that's just one of the things. Um, I'm sort of a black sheep, finding a girlfriend. From my, uh, like, like I told you, I have an ex. So all of these things are keeping 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 me in. Um, I'm I, I can say I'm sort of faking it. <laughs> okay. But um. So, anyways, I'll. So right, I'll uh, so right now, it sounds like when you when you say things like you're sort of faking it, and those things are keeping you in. It sounds like to me that you are not convinced that there's actually a God. But you, like many people, um, have been culturally uh, involved in religion and are reluctant to let go of it. Yeah, I would say I would say so. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to put words in your mouth. And so, it seems to me that you would you're an atheist who whose appeal is the religion and what the cultural aspects of that religion offer rather than what any truth might be related to it and you're you're struggling with hey the book says this um the book says that none of that makes any sense i'm going to do something that's a little unusual and and that is whether or not a God exists is independent from whether or not you like what a particular book says about God. And so if the core issue for you is, Hey, the book supports slavery and I don't like that. Therefore I, uh, I don't believe that there's a God you're committing a logical fallacy. Your, your reasons for accepting a God, should be tied to whether or not there's good evidence that this God exists, not whether you, you agree with the moral or immoral behavior of that God. And so if, if you were to say, oh, I don't want to worship a God that sanctions slavery, cool. That whether or not you worship or participate is, is entirely, I mean, that's a good enough reason, but that's separate from, hey, there isn't a God or there is a God. And so if all you're really struggling with is you don't believe, but you're surrounded by people who do, and there will be consequences. You know, if, if you were to tell these people, hey, I'm not, you know, gonna be practicing this religion anymore, um, they're gonna ask you why. And it seems like you don't really have a ready explanation to give them is that more of what you're looking for and an explanation so that when somebody says, Hey, why aren't you a Christian? Um, what's wrong with just saying, uh, I'm not a Christian because I don't think there's sufficient evidence for a God. And I find a lot of the things in the Bible incredibly problematic. Well, There's also this question that I have where, where do I connect? I, 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 I don't see where the Bible is written by a supernatural. Because I know that on this earth, people write books. I, I don't, I don't connect there. And So that's why the answer that I get from my people saying that men do bad things kind of work. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, I don't. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying. So people are saying, telling you when you say, hey, 
I don't like what the Bible says. And you're like, well, you know, the Bible was written by men and men get things wrong. Okay. Um, where is God in all of this? What is, you know, isn't God responsible for making sure that the Bible accurately reflects his thoughts? Okay, let me refer just to make sure. Is the Bible accurate enough? No, I'm saying if there are people in your life who are telling you that the bad things in the Bible are about people getting it wrong, like, hey, there's slavery in the Bible because people wrote the Bible, not mm -hmm. God then the question to ask is, okay, why hasn't God corrected this? How do they know that, that those positions are, in fact, because people got it wrong? How do they know that's not what God thinks? That's a great one. That's my job. That is a good one. Yep, 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 yep. And they also coming up with, you haven't read it. You haven't read the Bible, so you wouldn't understand. You should get into it. Anyway. Well, if they're going to say that it's written by men, and not by God, why should you bother reading it? Facts. And one of the things that the Bible says is, let God be true and every man a liar. And so if you read the Bible and it says that men are liars and God's the only one that tells the truth, and their answer is that God didn't write the Bible, men did, then the Bible's clearly a lie and you don't have to read anymore. Right. Right, right, right. I'll and give O'Neill, you some thought. Um. Yeah. And O'Neill, from, from my perspective, um, I, I always kind of liken those that are trying to sell Christianity to kind of like a bait and switch salesman, someone who dangles something in front of you. And then once you go mm -hmm. to buy it, they switch it out with something else. And I've seen this happen many times with Christians who are promoting religion because they want to prop up a God as, you know, a perfect, all loving, uh, all knowledgeable, all powerful, mm -hmm. um, get, should, should get the credit for everything that is good in your life. But the problem is with that type of dynamic, um, that God should also receive the blame for anything that goes wrong, because isn't that God, the one that designed all this, isn't that God, the one that's in control, isn't that God, the one that has all that power. And you'll notice that a lot of people that are trying to promote Christianity will do that bait and switch on you. They'll go, they'll, they'll, they'll sell you this God on all these qualities on standards of love or standards of justice. And then all of a sudden, once you start to critically analyze it or scrutinize it, now they switch it out with something else. Oh, humans are interfering, which doesn't make sense. Uh, if you look at it, mm -hmm. you know, kind of logically, um, God's right. love is a different kind of love. We wouldn't understand it, but you're still sold that idea on the concept of love, but then it has to be analyzed on some other type of love, which at that point, why even call it love? Just give it its own name because you're talking about something different. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of people try to do that with you. And it's it's kind of an emotional game that that I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose. There are many of these people you're likely interacting with probably are genuine believers. They're trying to make sense of this themselves and the advice they give you, the mm -hmm. feedback they give you. They probably I'm not saying there's anything malicious on, on their part, but they're, they are um, they're doing their best to make this work and they're that's that's kind of an emotionally driven type of stance um you want to be careful not to fall into that it's, it's hard to not be emotional when you're getting into or out of a religion it's in a better world we would all be completely logical about it um but just kind of know what's kind of driving those people and what might be driving yourself when you're when you're analyzing these things you know ask yourself I may not believe this is true, but how much do I want this to be true? Is that interfering with my ability to critically analyze this? Um, uh, how can I, you know, just for a moment, set aside my needs, set aside my 
want for hope, meaning, and purpose and just look at it and just critically and objectively analyze the facts without those emotions interfering. Um, and uh, I guess maybe I'll ask you, you mentioned you're of Haitian descent. You mentioned you're a black sheep. How do you, how does that make you feel when you think that, hey, I'm the black sheep in, in you know, my community or in my family? Is that something you like and embrace? Is that something you maybe want to change? What's your kind of what's your stance on that? Do you think? Well, being a black sheep in a lot of situations, it's kind of it's kind of hurting me, right? I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that family members are not willing to call me for parties, uh, okay. for get-togethers, barbecues, or whatever, because right. you know they gather around and you know. They know yeah. that I'm lingering about leaving, and, yeah. Yeah. and um, the fact that my last relationship, um, uh, I have a daughter with my ex, and not because of my questioning, uh, it, it affected that. I'm not saying that was the end all be all, but that definitely made a dent in the relationship yeah and and, um, you and it's even hard uh -huh. yeah go ahead sorry no no please continue i don't want to interrupt you go ahead so uh, it, it it was a big dent in, in in two ways for my life right in the future yeah. relationships and my past relationships and the family gatherings uh, and, you know i'm not going to be called to be a godfather anymore or the, you know, it there's a there's a there's a good thing of being a black sheep and a and that that is a bad. The good thing is, I like everything that I'm thinking to be true, and I love the critical thinking. Damn it! Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the, and the the type different different religious groups and different individuals engage in different sorts of shunning. Some of it is more organized and uh, church mandated, like you will not associate with this. In other in other situations, it's just that people aren't comfortable uh, anymore. Like, mm. I, there are people in my family who aren't going to invite me to to events because they're not comfortable around me. Um, and I recognize that and I'm fine with it. Um, they shouldn't be comfortable around me because their religion, uh, is unjustified, unwarranted. They don't have good reasons for it. And my views are definitely going to make them uncomfortable. And I understand that, which is why, while it may be disappointing that I don't get to hang out with some of those people, on the other hand, I'd much rather hang out with the people who appreciate me for me and who aren't you know terrified that i might uh point out a problem with religious belief right now and this right. is not my business and um you're free to to address this however you want you said you had a daughter and so i can tell you that if i were in your shoes um every other person in the family i wouldn't give a rat's ass what they thought about me my entire focus would be on my daughter and making sure that I get to remain a part of her life and that she knows I'm there and that whether she agrees with me or not, I'm going to love her and I'm not going to, to mistreat her or shun her the way the rest of the family might, you know, do me. Um, that's got to be, that would have to be my top priority there. That aside, you have to realize with, with respect to you and the other family members, you're the one whose view has changed. That doesn't make this your fault, but it does mean that you are the one that changed. And because of that, you have to give them some leeway, some time to ask really silly questions, uh, some time to mm -hmm. come to grips with it and understand it, and to make a decision that if they don't want to be around you, um, that you're just gonna have to deal with that. But you can also, <coughs> excuse me, you can also let them know that the fact that you don't agree with them doesn't mean you have to talk about it all the time or ever or make 
you know, a barbecue shouldn't be uncomfortable just because there's somebody there who doesn't believe what everybody else believes, because I'll guarantee right. you, uh, if this barbecue is big enough, there's somebody else there who also doesn't believe it's just nobody else knows it because they haven't said so yet. And they might be keeping their mouth uh, shut because they're fearing of being ostracized. Um, just a uh, coattail on what Matt just said, just a coattail on Matt just said, um, uh, I'm an ex Jehovah's witness. So I'm the victim of organized religious shunning. I have virtually everyone I grew up with, uh, if they were to know of my status as an ex witness and also my status as an atheist activist, I would be straight up just, uh, uh, shun. They won't even say a greeting to me on the street. And I even have some family members that do the same thing. Um, oh, so, um, and a lot of us face this. And unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world. You can't have everything you want. So what you need to do is you need to look at what do you value more? Do you value more uh, being outwardly genuine to your inner thoughts? Do you value your friendships more than being your genuinely self? You know, outgoing um do, how much do you value this versus that and then you have to pick a path forward and say okay this is what i'm gonna be doing this is my plan think about the consequences think about uh risk versus rewards and it's it's a decision only you can make it's only something you can analyze for yourself and you can make that choice for yourself and, and you can ask for advice but nobody can make that decision for you it really just comes down to what you value right. and how you want to live right 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 I appreciate that, um, um, fellas. Um, Matt, as for my daughter, I absolutely agree. I will um, put the 100% focus on her. Um, I'm not going to tell her what to believe, but how yep. to think. Yep. I don't know if you would agree with that. That's what I've been saying for 20 years almost. Don't teach kids what to think. Teach them how to think. The rest of it will work out. Give them the uh, tools. So, yep. Right. So if she gets in, if she gets in any type of religion, then it is what it is. It, she needs to know that she can come to you with questions that you will talk to her honestly. And that mm -hmm. while you may not agree with the decisions she makes, uh, that doesn't change the fact that you love her, uh, and will, you know, you're not going to abandon her, even if, you know, people wind up disagreeing. Uh, I think that's, that, that's just my thoughts on, on the best way to do it. But remember, I don't have any kids. So, um, while some people would say that disqualifies me from giving advice about kids, I just think it means that I haven't fucked any, anybody up, uh, the way parents right. are almost always going to do, uh, almost all parents are going to do psychological damage to their kids. It's right. almost unavoidable right. unless you're like me and you just don't have kids. Have you ever seen that meme? Oh. Uh, it's two parents, one parent's labeled fucked up. The second parent is labeled fucked up in another way. And the child is labeled fucked up in a whole new way. Yeah. yeah. We're, oh, we're, we're all, we're all important, imperfect people. We all have our issues and our, our problems. The, the best thing to do is just minimize that and do our best to not pass on our problems to our children and, and give them the best shot they have. I think whenever people have a new right, child right, right. and some people will start like, Oh, we're going to start a college fund for you. Um, we just need to divert half of that money to a therapy fund. And that way, you know, <laughs> when they're old enough and they really need the therapy, they've got the funds to do it. All right. Right. Well, thanks hey, a lot fellas, for calling. Um, I, I'm I hope things improve. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you on, on, on one one last thing even if it's um she she agrees to some whatever religion where it's money sucking religion and i'm the one anyways that, that's what i'm really scared of you know those sects yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You, you yeah. can you can be supportive of your child without financially supporting their decisions or their religion. It can, you know, you don't have to give money to a church on behalf of your child. I would not. If my kid, if I had a kid right. and they came to me and they said, "Hey, I'm I'm involved in this religious organization. Uh, I need some money to do this thing. 
Uh, well, okay, going on a field trip that just happens to be sponsored by a religion is something different than me giving money to religious organizations on their behalf. But those are things that you can work out later. Right now, love your kid. Thank you so ready much, for guys. Kid. Yep. Sorry. No, it's a good. Thanks, O'Neill. Thanks, uh, thanks so much. Um, I hope, hopefully, next time I call, I'll be um, a complete atheist. But, um, uh, yeah. Well, you are. You'll just have to be comfortable yeah. saying it. But I'll talk to you later. Right, right. Yeah, you probably are. Anyway. Right. Um, yeah, just becoming comfortable with it is takes time. Figuring out that new dynamic takes time. And I we didn't mention, but there's lots of resources that he can find uh, fresh new social, social circles uh, if he requires one. You know, there's lots of uh, places yeah. you can go, lots of resources online where you can find like-minded people and start building a new friend circle and start finding that support that might be taken away from you if you leave. That's what I had to do. Not only... To Yep. Not but, only can you reach out to recoveringfromreligion.org or the Secular Therapy Project, but there's uh, American Atheists and a number of other local community groups. Uh, you can reach out to the state directors uh, in your state for American Atheists and other organizations. You can find uh, a ton. Uh, matter of fact, I was involved with an organization here in Austin for many, many years, um, and there were other secular organizations here as well. And sometimes they don't always know about each other. So it's good to do a search and see if you can find a variety of different organizations and find the one that best meets your needs, you know, because some of them are going to be about, we're going to have a skeptics in the pub thing where we're just going to, hey, we're going to meet on Thursday night. We're going to have, you know, drinks and, and uh, discussions. Uh, and that may not be the thing for you, especially if you're a recovering alcoholic or something and, and going to places where there's alcohol just isn't a good thing. There's going to be others that are more politically motivated where we're going to be working. Like, for example, I'm here in the capital of uh, Texas. We're surrounded by Texas, but we won't ever actually surrender. And in the meantime, we can go there and lobby and talk to our elected representatives uh, here in the state. So there's an opportunity to be more political here. There are other organizations that are more fun based. We're going to play games just so that you get some period of time where you're not the only secular person in the, in, in the room. Uh, Cause that can be really a, a oppressive feeling. Uh, and, and it's one of the things where if your family is, is cutting you off from things, just finding some people to have a barbecue with, uh, since that seemed to be one of the things that, that you would have liked to have been participating in, uh, maybe enough. All right. Yeah. We and have a couple of callers. Go ahead. No, I was going to say just, it's okay to shop around too. It's just like buying a car or finding a therapist. Take a test drive. If you like it, keep going. If you don't like it, go find something else. So you can take your time and make the right choices. No rush. Yep. Uh, we have a number of callers, and we're going to get right into some more of them in just a minute. But as a reminder, this show is called Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock. Dave uh, has been diagnosed with ALS and is dealing with all of his end-of-life issues right here in public and traveling around the world, sharing his story, his thoughts, communicating with other people in similar positions, talking about the difficult issues of facing a terminal diagnosis, how it's different with a secular background um, than it is with a religion to perhaps lean on. If you have thoughts on that subject, feel free to, to call in, especially if you're a theist who, who thinks that uh, these sorts of um, issues need a, a theistic uh, thing to point to. I see Dave in chat um, yep. just now. Dave said, was speaking of the Recovering From Religion fall excursion this past weekend. I think those trips take more out of me now and leave me open to sickness. Well, we're pulling for you, Dave. And down in the chat below this is is our a couple of links. One of them is to IamDyingOutLoud.org. That's Dave's nonprofit organization. But directly above that is a specific link to Patreon.com slash DyingOutLoud, where you can go and you can chip in to help support Dave. Uh, because Dave is now at the point where getting uh, in-home caregivers is going to be essential for him and his partner so that he can continue to do this incredibly important mission that he's on um, for the remainder of his life. And, uh, I hope that's 40, 50 years and they find some cure. And in 20 years, Dave and I can just be sitting around having a cigar or something similar, uh, whatever's acceptable, um, in, in the future and talking about, Hey, you remember that time you were dying? 
you, you remember that time we, we went through all this? How much cooler is it that we now live in the future? Um, and so while most of this uh, today is Eric and I doing our best to feebly fill in for our friend Dave and drum up support for Dave as well, if you are not as keen on supporting individuals on Patreon or supporting a nonprofit organization in that sense tied to a specific individual, um, you can also consider supporting ALS research and other things like that. Um, I would love for the United States of America to have the same sort of voluntary assisted dying laws that uh, are in Australia, and I'd love for us to have better ones. Um, we, we have a number of issues, but not the least of which is healthcare. My, uh, I pay a ridiculous amount of money every month just so that I pay slightly less for prescriptions to stay alive. And if I go into a hospital for another heart surgery, I don't lose my house and home and everything else. Medical bills are the number one source. I, I believe it's still the number one source of bankruptcy in the United States in the great yeah. capitalist democracy where we will, uh, we will rip you off to get an education. We will rip you off to keep you alive. Um, and uh, we will tax your income and then tax the money you make on the income and then tax what you buy with it and then tax what you, the money you make off what you sell with it. And I get it. I'm all in favor of that because the, the, the access to both information and health care and other things, wonderful. And it's essential. But there are a lot of people in the United States and outside of it that are incredibly impoverished, that don't have access to any of those things. And when they contract one of these illnesses, they just die. They, they have no treatment options. There are people dying of treatable illnesses around the world. But tonight we're here to take calls from you guys on a number of issues, and we'll get to Super Chats a little bit later on. So in addition to supporting Dave on Patreon, you can go to IamDyingOutLoud.org, and you can contribute your um, your Super Chats as well, which we'll be reading in a little bit. All right. I want to take this call because I don't understand it. So Michael, uh, a an atheist in New York with no pronoun preference, uh, you are on with Eric and Matt. How are you? Hey, Matt. How are you doing, Andy? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I would like to um, I'm a speaker. Let me take you off here. Um, I agree with you on a lot of things. I disagree with you on a lot of things as well. Uh, I think you do an amazing job at tearing down religion, organized religion, hypocrisy, um, just the evil vileness of <laughs> modern day Christianity. Um, but I think there's also a throwing the baby out with the bathwater situation where there is something more and it is accessible and repeatable and understandable. I don't know what you mean by and, something more. Um, I, I'm sorry. I get a lot of feedback. So it's hard for me to understand. You're getting feedback when I talk because we're hearing you fine and no feedback here. When you say there is okay, something more, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just on my end. So as I talk, I hear myself talk and it's, uh, it's a bit confusing. Are you I on a speakerphone? Are you on a headset? I'm on my telephone. If you have the okay. stream going in a tab on your browser, close it. Uh, all right. Or mute it. Okay. In any case, I'm sorry. This whether is my you're first getting time, feedback, so, uh, in yeah. any case, whether in any case, whether you're getting feedback when you talk or not, I need you to get to some actual point I I can actually address. So, what do you mean? There's something more. Um, I think there is a spiritual component. There is uh, more than the physical. Um, physical reality that we interact with every day. Why? I think Eastern religions have done a pretty good job at um, Why? Why? Why do you the way think, to find that. 
what what do you mean by spiritual component and why do you think it's real yes um i'm attempting to stop the feedback i'm sorry give me one well, second. all right i'm going to put you i tell you what i'm going to put you back in the queue you can try and figure out what's going on and then we'll get back to you in a little while and in the meantime think about exactly what you mean by spiritual component and why you think it's actually sure. uh, real so we'll, we'll come back to you in a little bit while you were trying to work out whatever audio issues you're having. And on that front, we'll take uh, Varov from India. Welcome to the show, pronouns are he, him. You're on with Eric and Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Hello. Thanks. Yes. So uh, one of my friends, not a friend, actually, I know the person he works with me. Can can you move and the microphone? Got, I got diagnosed with Adolf, AML. Adolf, Adolf, pause, pause. Can you move the microphone a little way okay. from your mouth? There, there's a really terrible clipping sound. Is it double? It, I don't know yet, but go ahead. Okay. Okay, so one of my friends got diagnosed with leukemia. And the problem is he wants to live, but he doesn't want to take medical care. I'm having a very difficult time understanding you. Okay, is it better? You can't just say, is it better? Uh, what's happening here is when you speak an entire sentence, there are intermittent clipping issues uh, that make it very difficult to understand. So when you say, is it better, that there's no way for me to assess that. Um, so let me, under let me see if I understand this right. You have a friend who's been diagnosed with cancer who doesn't want to get medical help? Yes. Okay. Um, but he wants to stay alive and uh, is uh, visiting temples. He wants to stay alive and what? Visiting temples to get help. Okay. So your friend wants to stay alive, but is visiting religious temples instead of medical facilities exactly have you when, when you have you spoken to them about this quite a few times actually so what but is their he's reason like no I, you can't do anything the only god can help me now i'm in so much pain so he's in terrible pain and he's saying only god can help him um has he yeah. Sought medical? Has he sought medical treatment previously that stopped working or didn't work? He stopped going after the diagnosis. This is the uh, second time. First time he did took uh, the treatment, but second time he's not willing to. Okay, so he went and saw doctors. They gave him some treatment, and he stopped treatment. Well, as unfortunate no, as it is, he, this is the second time he got cancer. First time he did took the treatment. Wait, the fir first time, what was he being treated for the first time? The same thing. Okay, so th the treatment worked or it didn't work, and then he got cancer again? It worked, and he got it again. Okay. So, after he got it the second time, did he go back and talk to medical professionals? Yes, for diagnosis only. Okay, so here's the unfortunate thing. If your friend's an adult, they get to make their own decision. And so you can talk to them and let them know that you care about them and that you wish they'd seek treatment, but you're not, well, you're probably not a doctor. You're definitely not their doctor. And so what goes on between them and their doctor is none of your business. Maybe, maybe his doctors have said there is nothing else we can do. Or maybe his now doctors was, have said, uh, they want him to or maybe, or, or maybe, or maybe his doctors have said, hey, the treatment is chemotherapy. And essentially what chemotherapy is, we're going to slowly kill you and hope that it kills the cancer before it kills you. And the person decided that they don't want that. Hmm. It could That's, be alive. Uh, that's what I was going to ask is uh, if, if this friend of yours 
underwent chemotherapy and radiation before and treated the cancer successfully, it could be he's fearing yes. the treatment again he more than he's before, fearing the yes. cancer. Yeah. Would you say that he's perhaps fearing the treatment more than he's fearing the cancer? And if you don't know, you don't know. Just, oh. You can let us know that the the call disconnected. Mm, okay, so sorry that the call yeah, disconnected there, Fadov. It's yeah. We, we, let's let's go ahead and talk about this. Go ahead and finish what your thought was. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, you can't. You can do your best to talk to your friends to try to convince them, give them data, persuade them. But it, in the end, it is their decision. If you can't move them, you can't move them. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't try. But um, it could be there's a lot of factors involved. Maybe they uh, are, like I said, uh, I suggested fearing the treatment when they're fearing the cancer itself. Or maybe they uh, are just kind of not finding any more purpose in living. And there could be multiple factors. And you got to kind of explore that and talk to them and unfold that and um, ask questions. Don't tell them what they should be doing. Ask questions as to why they're doing what they're doing. Try to drill down into that, get their motivations, and see if there's perhaps you know, uh, a, a contradiction in their position, or maybe they aren't fully appreciating what they might be losing or how their family might feel. There could be all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, underlying factors that you can perhaps open up with some, you know, well-formulated questions. Yeah. I, it, let me, um, I mentioned an individual, I'm not still not going to give the name, but the individual I talked about earlier in the show, who is basically uh, dying of cancer, and is and now hoping for a miracle, they're the type of person that are that is convinced that miracles happen. Um, I've seen no evidence that miracles ever happen. I see plenty of people making claims about miracles, but I don't see any evidence that miracles happen. And but despite the fact that I've never met this person at all, we are not friends. Um, this person might not, probably doesn't even know my name. But they've meant a lot to me over the years. And if we were good friends, and he said to me, the chemotherapy is not working. I am going to continue seeking whatever experimental medical treatments I can, but I'm also going to rely on my faith and I'm probably going to, you know, uh, try some alternative medications. I would spend probably zero minutes trying to convince him against that or to not do that. My, probably my only caution would be if you're going to be taking um, alternative medicines, please keep consulting with your doctor. Most of them are likely to be completely ineffective. You know, most of them are likely to have no effect on anything, but make sure that you're, you're not taking something that conflicts with whatever your doctor is trying to do experimental or otherwise. Um, but all I care about at that point is that my friend, um, w we all get to decide we get to decide and should be allowed to decide how we want to, to treat uh, some condition, some diagnosis that we have. And it's far more important, especially if somebody is dying, to just be there for them and love them than it is to try to convince them that they're fucking wrong. They may be wrong and they may wind up dead because of it. It may be that this, this friend of yours um, has something that is ultimately treatable and that after some period of time with treatment, they come out the other side and they're, they're healthy and they're cancer-free and they're a cancer survivor and they are now a, a great champion um, of science-based medicine. Or it might be that they die either way and what mattered most to them was doing it on their terms of not suffering as much 
You know, if, if I wind up in a position where the cure is worse than the disease or causes more suffering than the disease, and it's not even close to a guaranteed cure, I could easily see myself saying, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to stop treatment. I'm not going to go down the woo-woo path of, you know, oh, give me shark cartilage or whatever else people are trying to shove in. You know, I'm not going to be uh, pumping other things into me. But I can understand someone saying that. And it's incredibly frustrating and heartbreaking for the people who stay behind who love those people. My, my heart goes out, the individual that I, I was spoken about, uh, to his family, to his kids, to his grandchildren, to his wife, to everybody who loves and interacts with him. They had recently like a, a prayer circle vigil for this individual. And my gut instinct as an atheist, there's a whole bunch of people standing around laying hands and praying for this individual. And my gut instinct was, Ugh, I hate this. And yet they did it right because it wasn't it was no matter what you believe in whether you're a believer in a religion or not whether you're an atheist or not whether you believe this is going to be effective or not we are here united to say we care about this individual we want the best for this individual and this individual um has our love and support and if there is some being somewhere who can intervene, please do so. I, I was not bothered by, by that laying on of hands thing because of the way they did it. I was really bothered by a shitty individual who decided to tell this person that they got cancer because their walk with God wasn't good enough. Fuck you, Cusco. But on that on that front how, how dare people leverage somebody else's pain and suffering and do that uh how dare you yeah. speak for god I, anybody at any time who thinks they can they can speak for god fuck you but if you do it on behalf of someone who is terminal you have taken what should be entirely about them and made it about you and your fucking fictional beliefs that you can't demonstrate are real. It's just vile. Why can't you be supportive and loving? Why is it that the atheist is a monumentally better human being towards someone who's not their friend than their actual religious fucking friend? You make me sick. I don't want to, I don't want to leverage all this yeah. for the other stuff. Individuals, individuals like that are just vultures waiting for their opportunity. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's, it's, it's a, it's kind of a, of a, per, a perversion of the treatment and comfort process where you're now shifting focus from the individual to, oh, my grander thing that I have a vested interest inside of. Um, and if, if you really look at it while not directly, so the, the association you keep your friends, your family, the comfort they give you as a sick person, you know, if you're, if you're ill or if you're a friend of an ill person, you're giving them comfort and, 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 uh, uh, your friendship and your support, you're part of the treatment. You are keeping their spirits high. You're keeping them in good mental health and with a good attitude and the mental state affects how the body feels. Even if it's maybe 0.001% increase in, in success or survivability from those good feelings, nothing magical about them. It's just, you're making the person feel better. And that's going to affect on the body. It's a good thing to do. You want to, you want to be there. You want to give that. Um, you definitely don't want to be like, you know, the asshole Matt was discussing or uh, describing where you are bringing in that negativity for your God. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's gross and icky and terrible. Uh, I, I hate seeing that kind As of stuff. A, it really gets under my skin. Yeah. Well, we had a theist caller that I was just getting ready to click talk, and they disconnected. So hopefully they'll call back. Uh, we'll get to another call here in just a minute. I just want to remind people that normally I do another show here on the line, and I do it on Wednesday nights, and it's called The Hang-Up. And you know what my hang-up's going to be this week? something else because i'm not going to be here but jimmy's going to do a special episode because i want it tomorrow night 
uh, in place of that. So you can tune in and listen to Jimmy and find out what he's hung up on, um, if anything. On Thursday, the Transatlantic Call-In Show is going to be Dr. Ben and Arden. Um, if you are confused or have issues with uh, trans rights or trans people in general, if somebody's called you a transphobe and you want to defend your position or find out what you did wrong, there's a great opportunity for you to call in the Transatlantic Call-In Show. That starts at 2 p.m. Central tomorrow, or sorry, Thursday. The Because I Wanna will be tomorrow night at 6 p.m. And the Sunday show, I will be out of town. I'm traveling to St. Louis to do a magic show and uh, to interact with some family and friends uh, in addition to that magic show. And so the Sunday show this week is going to be Jimmy and Forrest Valkai. Uh, we don't, I don't have inf any information on who's going to be on next week's Skep Talk, which will be Monday at 6 p.m., or who's going to be Dave Warnock's guest next Tuesday on Dying Out Loud. But we've got, uh, we've got more callers here. And Dylan in Florida, pronouns are he, they, has a question about uh, heaven. So welcome, Dylan. Um, uh, it's if it's all right, it's more of a topic of um, how hell is more or less on the same level as traumatic as, as heaven. Sorry, there also is an echo on my end, and mildly distracting. <laughs> wow. I, I'm wondering if that has something to do. We're, we're using a different, uh, a different PC today with, with audio stuff. I'll, I don't know. It's, it's nice for it's uh, nice you to tell. Hopefully, um, we can get this problem solved. I can hear you all just fine. It's just I, I can hear myself, so I'm pausing more than I should. Yeah. I'm wondering if, if there's something about the, um, the board and the configuration that's feeding your own audio back to you. Uh, but we'll have to worry about that another time. If, if you have to, uh, put your fingers in your ear, state your case as briefly or succinctly as you can and then we'll we'll try and answer it there so that you won't have a reflection of yourself brevity is the soul of wit right. here yeah. um more or less I, I, it's more of a conversation of discussion about how heaven can actually be traumatic because i've had somebody else explain it a little bit more succinctly where they describe it as it can actually lead to suicidal ideation because for a lot of kids that are traumatized, it's, well, I'm not going to do anything to hurt myself because that's a sin, but I'm a good kid. I know I'll go to heaven. And it's thinking, it probably is a good idea if I just die. And it's continuing that sort of thought process and, it, and, it, and it's more or less, it can lead to just the same trauma of, Oh, if I'm bad, I want to go to hell. And it's more the passive nature of trauma that can happen of um, just sort of, sorry, I was really distracting. <laughs> so sorry. No problem. Um, so do you have a, do you have a point? Do you have like a specific point about this you want to discuss? Um, you're mentioning that, um, belief in heaven, or less belief in the afterlife. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's it's more of is that a good point to bring up to as a or as a topic of debate of esca escaping a religion of where breaking out of that 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 thinking. Um, and just. Right, my brain's not. <laughs> let, let me let me let me stop, Dylan. Um, let me stop because I, I I'm pretty sh confident I I know what you're saying, and I think probably the best thing to do um, is for me to put you back in the queue for now, uh, or actually j just mm -hmm. so that we'll address this and then come back and or I'll mute you and then we'll come back and ask if if we address it. Okay. One of the things I Arden and I watched this amazing. Um, video about an audio device that targets so you can target audio directly at somebody so that they're the only ones that can hear what's going on and if you feed their own voice back to them with, with just the right delay 
for many people, you can completely short circuit their brain. Uh, not only is that almost certainly what's happening to Dylan right now, but it is one of those things that drives me absolutely bonkers when we have an audio show like that. I'm somebody who's affected by it. I can force myself to tune it out because I've got decades of, of doing live TV, but uh, the, the fact that that happens explains a lot. And it's something that's going to make me much more cognizant of audio issues in, in the future and, and trying, and I know I said, we're going to mute you more. We're going to mute you. More. We are going to mute you more. Um, but yes, the, there is audio feeding back to the callers. Um, Arden and them are working on it. Don't pester them. They're trying to uh, figure it out. Uh, on the on the subject of heaven being potentially traumatic, yes, this is a known issue. There's a reason why organizations like the Catholic Church have pronounced that suicide is a mortal sin. That if you if you commit suicide, you will go to hell. And you know the, the justification they supposedly provide for it is that it's up to God to decide who dies, and so you don't get to, to play God and and take your your life in your own hands. Um, they did that because the very notion of a heaven could be used to inspire some people to say, you know what, this life is absolutely miserable. I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next one. Uh, the problem is that first of all. There's no reason to think there is a next one or that it's better. And even if there was a next one's better, what are the criteria that you get there? If you kill yourself, do you still get there? Um, what's soteriology is the study of what is required for salvation. And so is salvation a gift from God? Is it a um, something that God just through his grace bestows upon you? Is it an exercise of faith or anything that you can do? Um, I will say that Never once in the entire time that I was growing up was I under the false impression that being good gets you to heaven. As a matter of fact, it was pretty much drilled into my head that you can be really good, and that has nothing to do with whether or not you're getting into heaven. And yet, I know countless people who are like, oh, they probably went to heaven because they're good. There's this cultural version of Christianity that has nothing to do with orthodoxy or biblical theology that is all about this, no, this, this notion that isn't consistent with the Bible, that being good gets you to heaven. Uh, when the Bible is the exact opposite, the Bible is none are good. The Bible is for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody is in need of salvation. And then it goes through whatever the, the salvation methods are. So this notion about being good, um, it's one of the things that uh, I'll, I'll at least commend some religions on, hey, there's a loophole in our afterlife thing, and rather than having people running around uh, killing themselves, we need to put a stop to it. But when you look at things like Andrea Yates, who many years ago drowned her children so that they wouldn't reach the age of responsibility, because if you die young, some children or some religions say you go straight to heaven. If you loved your kids and desperately wanted to make sure that they went to heaven, the most loving thing you could do is to damn yourself to hell by killing them before they each reach the age of responsibility. That is what is, is the logical conclusion from some versions of Christianity. But it's even... There's something that's even more preposterous than that, which is within Christendom, there's this notion that God has a plan. Everything works according to God's plan. God already knows who's going to end up in heaven and who doesn't. And if those things are true, then whether you kill yourself or not, God already knows what you're going to do. God already knows whether or not you're going to be in heaven. And so this notion that you're taking, you're violating God's plan by killing yourself. No, no, no. If you actually kill yourself and everything goes according to God's plan, then that went according to God's plan. That's the problem that they can't get out of. This is what happens when uh, people uh, take things into their own hands to try to make their religion make sense. And 
it's it's a very difficult uh it's, it's very difficult to find a solution that meets all the criteria of what the religion's history and what the religion's holy book say a and to make that make sense with the the prospects of what people will discover out of it by that what i'm saying is if people say hey i will go to heaven under x and that would cause them to be more prone to suicide the religion has to start creating uh stop gaps to prevent those loopholes from being used does that make sense dylan oh uh, yeah is um, the echo gone so much. By the way? I, I, uh, on my end it isn't uh it isn't and i and i apologize for it for it's not it's not your fault a lot more than i thought it would <laughs> so, yeah it, it is an incredibly troubling thing. I unmuted you specifically so that we could ask if uh, they're working on the issue, and I want to make sure we could see if you're still getting an echo. But you are, so. But it's all right. Um, I also have more wanted to point out about how, um, and it's not even so much of these individuals going forward with actually hurting themselves. It's more that thing of my backup plan is to just simply die and it'll be fine because I will go into this afterlife. I will go into heaven. Um, cause even though I wasn't raised with specifically heaven, um, there was this idea of there is an afterlife and everything will be okay. You know, once you pass away, you know, it'll happen. Um, for even for just for, even for the kids that they don't, they know they're, it's like suicide is wrong, but still dying would be okay. Even if there's not anything, directly wrong with um like mental health wise until you know later until that trauma develops into something more um and it's more the external factor of growing in an abusive household or growing in an environment that is just not a livable experience and then not understanding that it can get better in this life before those thoughts creep in of Oh, heaven's there. Heaven's there. That'll be a good backup plan. That's a good backup plan. Dying will be fine. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that would be. I, I think so. Uh, that, Go ahead. I think that'd be a real shame if somebody denies treatment because they're like, "Oh, I got cancer. This is my way out." Like, uh, yeah, I can definitely see how that might affect some people's decisions on on what course to take with their their uh, you know medical treatments and such. Um, and. Uh, yeah, it's it definitely, like I said, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the episode tonight that the idea of an afterlife, the idea of heaven greatly diminishes the value of the time we have here. And we can definitely see how that would affect individuals and their decision making and how they uh, are no longer planning for what's real, but what's been promised and, and what they've been promised could and most likely is a lie in many religions. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I just we wanted to bring it up as a topic of discussion because um, I know that there's a lot more on the topic of hell being traumatic. Um, but for me, that wasn't ever my experience. It was more that ideation of it'll get better when I die. And it's not planning ahead. And those instances of I didn't plan to be alive now. And next month I'm turning 25. And that was sort of the goalpost for a long time was I don't think I'll make it past 25. Um, just because in my head, I thought I would be gone by now. Uh, and honestly, becoming atheist and more secular has definitely. And I definitely look forward to seeing everyone. Hopefully at LionCon, because I really am looking forward. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely have to save well, money well, for that, though. If nothing <laughs> else, like uh, you know, <laughs> if nothing else, heaven, heaven may be um, somebody's backup plan, but my backup plan is to do LionCon every year. <laughs> Anyway, um, I apologize that we haven't we haven't solved the echo yet, Dylan. But we're gonna move on to another caller. And um, thanks so much. You're welcome. I was able to kind of ignore it at the end there. Um, yep. But I definitely apologize for the weird pauses that I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault. All right. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. As uh, we we got two more calls to go, and then uh, and then I'm gonna break in, and we're gonna knock out some super chats and stuff. Um, for the callers that are on the line, uh, we're still working on this issue um, for the 
the feedback, the loopback thing that's that's happening right now. So I'm going to go back to uh, Vlad uh, in particular and see, uh, or sorry, I'm going to go back to Michael first um, to in just a moment to see if we can communicate well enough. So Michael, when I put you live, and we still need a minute to work on stuff, but when I put you live, um, just cover up the earpiece so that you're not hearing yourself state what you mean by spiritual and why uh you're convinced that 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 spiritual thing uh exists and then i will uh perhaps mute you back and um i'm also going to smack somebody in chat for fun but oh we're going to reset the call system, so. There we go. Ready to connect. Click connect to show. In the meantime, Eric, what have you got going on and where can people find you in addition to being generous enough with your time to come in here and, uh, I don't know, talk about stuff like this with me? Yeah, um, been fairly busy over the summer, so I haven't done too much on my channel, but uh, that's going to be changing here really soon now that the rainy season has started up here in Washington. I got less to do outside, more to do inside. Um, but yeah, my channel is called Skeptics and Scoundrels. I've uh, been around for nearly a year now. Um, my goal there is to do general counter apologetics, uh, respond to the crazy things that religious folks say online, and do a lot of like, you know, really cool like live streams and stuff. And, uh, uh, and, you know, kind of branch out and just get to know the community and do stuff like this. And uh, I think also for the most part, like number one priority, I think, is I want to practice street epistemology and I want to get better at it. So uh, opportunities like this, I really appreciate because it helps me do that. Um, so, yeah, but my next video is going to be up here within a week or two. I definitely said that a month ago and I lied. Um, this time I really mean it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be coming up here really, really soon. I, I know that feeling. And um I'm in a I'm in a crazy rush. I'm flying out to do this show uh, this weekend, and luckily I've done two debates this month, so that's already two of the videos. But uh, getting debate reviews up, uh, in addition to the other videos that I was promised uh, promised to do, um, they're going to fall by the wayside. So I'm going to tomorrow record the first two of four debate reviews that are that are in the queue to make sure those are out and ready to go for this month's stuff, and then when I get back. I will do two more debate reviews to start off uh, October's videos, and then I'm doing a view on whether or not, a video on whether or not theism is falsifiable, etc. But let's see uh, if we are fortunate enough to have fixed this audio echo thing. Michael uh, in New York, please try and talk and let me know if we've solved the audio reflection issue. Uh, yes, Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. Do, are you still hearing still there? The echo is still there. All right, let's do this. Um, tell me what you mean by spiritual as succinctly as you can and why you think that that something spiritual exists. Um, spiritual meaning something beyond physical and through direct experience. Okay. Repeatable direct experience. So I don't know... I, I think there's more to the world than the physical already. So something beyond the physical isn't really a clear description, but you have repeatable direct experience. W give yeah. me an example. Uh, give me an example. I mean, is this just repeatable for you or can I do it? Uh, you, you certainly could. Yes. Cool. Tell me what it is that is that I can do that will give me this repeatable direct experience of the supernatural. Uh, yes. Give me a few seconds to flesh it out. Um, I know at first glance, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I believe I have the truth. Uh, I have evidence to back it up. Um, I, I just need you to tell me what it is that I can uh, do will provide repeatable I direct experience. That, um, Christianity is very clearly and obviously based on psychedelic experience. Okay, I'm going to mute you. Hopefully, this muting you'll, you'll detect because you'll have heard the beep. 
I realize there's a difficulty with stuff being fed back to you, but I need you to be very clear here. I need to know what repeatable direct experience, what I need to do to have a repeatable direct experience of the supernatural and how we know that my experience is of the supernatural. I don't need you to tell me what you think Christianity is or isn't based on. I do not give the slightest, tiniest fuck what you think Christianity is based on. What I care about is what can I do that will give me a repeatable, direct experience that is verifiably of the supernatural? Let's try this again. Can you do that? Okay. So, yes, my point is by using Christianity is... No. The... Okay. You're now muted again. I don't need you to say, my point is by using Christianity. I do not fucking care. I need you to tell me what I can do. What thing can I do that will give me a repeatable, verifiable, direct experience that can be confirmed to be the supernatural in origin and spiritual. That's what I need. I need nothing else from you right now. Can you do that? Yes, I've already done that in the first sentence when I said it's based on the psychedelic experience. No, Whether sir. it's verifiable. No, sir. Would no, sir. Stop. I'm muting you again. When you tell me that you think Christianity is based on psychedelic experience, that is not in any way. Here's what you need to do, Michael. You need to say, Matt, here's what you can do to have a direct, experiential, repeatable, verifiable experience of the supernatural. And then following that, state what exact step I need to do. Do I need to hold my thumbs a certain way? Do I need to drive my car a certain distance? Do I need to hold a mirror under a thing? This is really simple. I don't need anything else, nothing flowery, nothing off in a different direction. What the fuck do I need to do to have this experience? That's the only thing I want you to tell me. Go. Eat a handful of mushrooms. I've done that. Goodbye. I like I like how Michael, we we've we've dealt with this before. I just talked to a gentleman for an hour and a half the other night on one of my streams trying to tell me how uh what was that uh, ayahuasca juice or mushrooms is what I need for these experiences. And having a a, a long preamble to tell us about Christianity and all this flowery words to soften the absurdity of drugs as your answer um we've dealt with this before it's not helping you at all it's just it's going to piss matt off it's going to annoy me and it's it, there's all kinds of responses to using drugs to discover the spiritual discover the supernatural and i'll grant you maybe you are tapping into something that we can't with our sober minds the problem is for us from our point of view for us for you to convince us that drugs are the way to do this, you first have to demonstrate to us, explain to us how these experiences are not simply just the products of our minds out of chemical balance and on these hallucinogens. If you can't do that, we're not going to go taking drugs to, to experiment with this because we have no way to eliminate the natural and, and leave only the supernatural or spiritual or whatever you want to call it as the explanation. You, yeah. you need to think about how to eliminate these natural explanations before we even come close to doing that. And I made that deal with, with uh, the gentleman I was talking to uh, the other night. I said, hey, you send me a buck. I said, you first explain to me how it's not the product of my mind. Then you can send me a bucket of mushrooms and I'll try it. But it, until you don't then, have to explain anything to it. me. If you want to send me a bucket of mushrooms, I'll take them. I've done mushrooms. I've done acid. I've done mushrooms. Okay. You know what I've also done? I've learned about skepticism, critical thinking, and science. 
And I know that just because you have an experience on mushrooms that you don't have a good understanding of or explanation for, that doesn't mean that you've tapped into something beyond the physical. It doesn't mean that you've tapped into the supernatural. It doesn't mean that you've tapped into the spiritual. You can do your mushrooms, have your experience, and you will still have one hundred percent of the work left to do to show that the experience you had is actually supernatural i get it you like doing drugs you like the way it makes you feel you like having a wild experience you really 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 wish that it was giving you something profound and true but you're wrong in the same way that out-of-body experiences um, that the brain has death and dying experiences, when a brain is deprived of oxygen, when a brain is in its flawed state, when a brain is chemically altered, the very notion that that is more accurate than when a brain is functioning normally is laughable. Enjoy your drugs legally if you want to, but don't pretend for a second that you have direct experience of the supernatural. No, you have direct experience of being fucking high and you still have all your work left to do to show that what you experience when, you, when you're high is tied to the supernatural. In the entire history of the world, no one has ever demonstrated any methodology to confirm that there is anything supernatural or that you can detect it. If your case for the supernatural is you got really high and shit got weird, congrats, been there, done that many, many times. It does not in any way demonstrate the supernatural. Please, if you don't understand the basics of coming up with a methodology, just have your fun. Move to Washington or Oregon or wherever it's legal and responsibly, legally have whatever fun you have. But don't call up and say, ooh, I have direct experiential evidence of supernatural. No, you don't. No, you don't. You cannot demonstrate causation. You can't demonstrate the supernatural exists. You can't demonstrate whether or not it interacts in rea with reality in any detectable way. You do not. What you have is a brain that had an experience that you don't know have an explanation for, except I do have an explanation for, because that experience happens when you take drugs. Now, what's most likely the cause of that experience? The drugs or something supernatural? Oh, but the drugs let me experience something supernatural. If that's true, prove it. But if you're just going to say, yeah, Matt, you can take drugs and have fun. I know, done it, been there. That's not how you demonstrate the truth of a proposition. And just because you had a drug-induced experience doesn't mean you found something that is, in fact, true. And, Michael, uh, maybe, maybe give this some thought. Um, you, you've been on drugs. You think you've had spiritual experiences. Find someone who's been on drugs, like Matt mentioned himself. Find someone who been, has been on drugs and does not attribute those things to a supernatural spiritual experience. Get those two people in a room together. Talk to them. Try to find a mechanism to determine what was the cause, the mind or something else. Once you have a mechanism to explore that, then call us back and then we can maybe talk about something. Okay. I got, uh, I'm confused now. We got super chats we're going to get to here in just a minute. I'm just trying to figure out uh, if we're going to try and take this one last call or if the audio issues are, are too so over the top. I'm going to jump in. Hi. Uh, cool. I think we are going to do a stream reset really quick. So it shouldn't be nobody needs to go anywhere. It should be fine. I think the stream is going to stay live if I understand what's going on correctly. Uh, so just hang on. We're going to do a little boop boop bopping around and uh, be right back. Cool. If, by the way, if you guys lose this, if the stream drops, if the show goes out, whatever else, uh, let me say a couple things real quick. First of all, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for calling. Thanks for your super chats. We will get to your super chats one way or another at another time. But also, don't forget to go down there and check out Dave Warnock's um, nonprofit organization, uh, IamDyingOutloud.org, and his Patreon.com/slash/DyingOutloud. So if we get dropped, uh, just know that you know 
We love you guys, and we'll be back. We need a little uh, diddly song. I heard Arden, so I know yeah. I'm back. I I, me I messaged uh, Eric to reset. Yeah, and we're live. I just checked it on YouTube. So while we're waiting for Eric to get back, um, if you're ready, I'll try and take this last call, and then we can go to Supers. I, I um, okay. I'm ready to mute though, because anyway, good luck. I'll Let's try this and see how it goes. Vlad in Canada, uh, a theist pronouns are he him. Welcome to the show. The first thing I need you to do, and I'm very sorry that we're having to use you as our tech guinea pig. Um, can you talk a little, say hello, and then let me know if you're getting yourself echoed back. Baba boo, Baba boo, how it's your penis. Wow. So we didn't get to test whether or not they were hearing themselves back because that person waited for, I don't know how long, 30 minutes. Here's Jimmy, though. do that. I wonder if that person's that? on drugs. This is Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy's so I wasn't the Baba Booey guy. I know. I was trying are to see you if the echo was still there. And it, and it is. I think we actually have to reset the computer. There's some routing that we did before. So I would just say do Super Chats and Art and I will fix it for the uh, next episode. Rock and roll. All right, Producer Love. Put put up our super chats. Give me gonna... one second. I need to to. Uh, God. Hold on. Sorry, things are going wrong. Also, whenever you see callers like that, you can just drop them. That we know what they're what the messages are like, right? So, just for future, when they're putting on voices and shit. Funny, uh, funny enough that that screech was more logical than the. Uh... Michael's approach to the supernatural and spiritual. Yeah, no, no, I, I did drop them. Just, I just couldn't click it fast enough. All right. 1999 from Greg Murkowski. Thank you, Greg. Matt and Eric, not quite as good as Dave. I agree, but they'll do in a pinch, you know? And that's the thing is we're, we're here to support a friend, uh, who's having an off day. I know what that's like. I, I ended up taking a nap on the couch for a couple hours, uh, feeling a little underneath the weather. Yeah, um, I am a poor substitute for, for Dave Warnock, especially on Dave's show. But thank you so much, Greg. Put that one back up and go to the next one here. There you go. All right. $10 from Joe Pellerito. Uh, because every new day that Dave gets is a gift to him, and every day that he is dying out loud is a gif. Or is it jif? I don't know. Well, I've always said GIF because that's the way the guy that created the format pronounced it, but I get the argument that it should be GIF. Uh, I'm just not going to fight people on it. Go for ahead, some Arden. reason, this didn't come through all the way, but there he has a full message. Uh, hmm. Every day he is still dying out loud as a gift to the rest of us. Matt Dillahunty, uh, oh. that's a quote from you. And Matt, if I see you again, let's play chess. Deal. Uh, you can play chess. Uh... Oh, there it is. And there it is. All right. 1999 from Greg Murkowski. This is in honor of Arden, a top-notch producer. Wait a minute, uh, Greg. Are you, are you, what? Go ahead, Arden. I, I was just going to say I appreciate the compliment, but uh, as today's monstrosity of issues has demonstrated, it's absolutely not the case. Uh, but thank you. I, I appreciate it. Well, there was a new PC, a new setup today. I'm I'm actually really disappointed that Greg thinks you're only worth nineteen ninety nine. Uh, True, good point. I'm with you, nineteen ninety nine for Arden. She's been in there working her ass off. Eric and I just could sit here and blab and blab yeah. and talk and have fun. A yeah, good guys, a good producer not, rolls with a good producer rolls with the punches and and yeah, takes on problems that, as they the, come. The money that's coming in is mainly helping Dave. You guys don't love Arden and Dave enough to, to do more than that? I better, I tell you what, there's only like a handful more of these to go. I better see a lot more uh, Super Chats coming in for all the work that those people did behind the scenes. See, I'm no good at asking for money for me, but when it comes to money for Dave, let's, let's get the ball rolling. 
guilting people for money is so much easier when it's not your self-interest. It's there. It's, it's really else's. easy yeah. when it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> give Dave all your money. Give until it hurts Absolutely. and then give until it feels good and then give it till it hurts again. Absolutely. Uh, a dollar sign 1701 from Hank underscore says huge hugs to mega Dave from deep in the down under us Vulcan live long and prosper from the down under us yeah. $20 in the legend Canadian money from my favorite Canadian Kathleen Moncrief just sending lots of love to Dave and Bevan thanks so much and uh, I know they appreciate it and we really appreciate it here too look at that Alrighty. Uh, which one is that? I can't remember. Um, pounds. That's euros. It euros. looks like an e. oh, euros. That's right. Okay. 55 euros from John Doe. Matt, just take my money. You're awesome. Sweet. Thanks. And they're saying there's audio issues. That's all right. We haven't got a, a ton of super chats to get through. So I uh, will knock that out. And uh, once again, from my favorite Canadian, Kathleen Moncrief, and I spelled Bevan wrong, so please have more alleged dollars. Thank you. That's fair. Uh, well, I guess is what, Australian dollars? Australian dollars, maybe. Uh, upside down money, $10 from PhD Tony. That one thing that religion can offer is a sense of community and emotional support. If that's important and useful for someone, it's just dickish to attack it. But predatory to prey, is, but predatory to prey on that need. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Four ninety nine from John Doan. Dave, I love you. See, see how easy that is. All right. Now this is supposedly the last super chat, but I think if Eric reads it slow enough slowly enough there will be another one i could maybe do that let's try i'm watching you chat get something in there uh five dollars from larry fishman i thought suicide was bad just because it's technically murder i'll grant that my only source is tilda swinton in constantine 2005. well done Thank you so much, Larry. Thanks everybody for donating and contributing. Now, as a reminder of all the things that go on here on the line, this show, this Dying Out Loud, is normally hosted by somebody uh, much better at talking about this subject than either of us are and who we love dearly. Uh, it was great to see Dave in chat today. Uh, I hope you get feeling better soon. In addition to this program, there's a number of other shows here on the line. And I'd like to point out that right now we're sitting at about 96,800 subscribers. Uh, we're closing in on 100,000 subscribers. If you're watching this, whether you're live or just afterwards, and you haven't bothered to click the subscription button, the subscribe button directly below this, please consider doing it. And you can also give it a like and ring the bell so that you get notifications because they won't just notify you about the dying out loud program they will also notify you tomorrow night when jimmy goes live with a special because i wanna uh during my normal time slot because i won't be doing a hang up and they'll also notify you on thursday during the transatlantic call-in show where dr ben and arden will be uh here taking calls from awesome people and awful people all in the name of hey let's have a discussion about trans rights and trans issues on sunday jimmy and forrest will be back for an episode of the sunday show while i'm off gallivanting around the world uh and monday will be skep talk and then next tuesday will be another episode of uh the uh dying out loud show I, there were four more super chats that came in right at the end that I want to make sure we address real quick. And yeah, I, I say that more than that too. So I'm just going to bring you back to this page real quick. Okay. So I, I saw four. So there's $20 Canadian from Kathleen Moncrief. Ha ha. It wasn't the last. See, there you go. I knew somebody would do it. And that one. <sighs> Ah, uh, ten dollars from uh, X Dwell X Christian Nitty. Another one, but give it to Dave. Thanks, Nitty. You are awesome. See, this is what happens. Another holy cow, um, Kathleen Moncrief. Uh, the next time I'm in Canada, I'm just gonna we'll, we'll take you to dinner or something. Just uh, hold her a statue. Although this says, "Ha ha!" It wasn't the last. So maybe this one came through twice, even though it was a once. But it doesn't matter because. Kathleen's just fucking awesome. 
There are two entries, so looks like twice. Damn, Kathleen, nice. Five dollars from Panda for Dave and Arden. I'm guessing that's a battle. There try. you go. Into into battle. Yeah. I wonder if what happened is if the normal 30 second delay that the show's on got expanded during the hiccup. And so my call for this is the last uh, super chat. Everybody's like a minute or so behind on that. $5 for Larry Fishman for the emperor. I, I will put on voices for the right donations. $5 from Joe Pellerito. What kind of steak does a cat order? Rawr. You have yep. to say it out loud. I did. Rawr. I did. Thank you. Rawr. That's what happens when we read super chats. We say them out loud. $5 from Panda. I guess the rest of you can have some too. Thanks so much, Panda. Thanks to everybody. Um, there's a lot. Oh, well. Ar Arden's putting up extras, bonuses. Sorry, $5 no. from Eddie Dean. Rolling in. $5 from Eddie Dean. Hey, Eddie. How you doing? Uh, asked this in live chat the other day, but got no response. Do you guys hand wave dismiss all ghost videos? Ghost vids are a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, I don't watch ghost vids. Yeah. I don't watch uh, ghost hunters. None of that. Yeah. Uh, I find, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a video guy. So I find technical artifacting and glitches in videos very fascinating. Um, I've never seen anything that I go, oh, wow, this really defies explanation. Um, yeah, but my wife does love watching them around Halloween and we're almost in October. So I'm definitely gonna be seeing more and more on the TV. Not that she's a believer. She just likes the atmosphere puts in the house when it's spooky time. So yeah, I've never put much stock into it. Nah. Mm. Yeah, I don't put any, I have lots of other things that I enjoy. Um, that's not it. If in fact there's ever an actual, I find them to be awful, like the Bigfoot things and, you know, have we discovered Bigfoot? No. Yeah. You know, have we discovered Bigfoot? Have we discovered ghosts? Tune in Tuesday at 8 p.m. No, the answer is no, because if you discovered ghosts, we wouldn't be waiting until Tuesday at fucking 8 p.m. for your slickly produced video. It would be on the front page and on the news and you'd be getting a Nobel Prize for it. That's what happens when somebody actually discovers, you know, something like ghosts or the supernatural. Everything yeah. else is just a, a, a show. Yeah, if somebody discovers ghosts, what do you think they're going to go for first? I want to get some commercial viewership out of this, or I'm going to go for a Nobel Prize and become world famous. Like, I got what people. would be your goal if, you, if you're in that situation? And ask yourself that and see what they're doing. I got people who call into this show and, I, and, and other shows in the network because they think they've had an experience that is demonstrable and scientific that they think confirms the supernatural. If people are willing to call into something like this, take this convinced anybody who actually had a good argument would be up there in front of the Nobel prize committee, but yep. 499 from JJ chili dogs. Hello. I'm loving the show. I'm loving the show too. We have so much fun I'm gonna have uh, for whatever, for whatever reason, my, uh, whoops, my, my cue on the, on the VMix thing just wasn't getting updated. Uh, so I'm trying to find, I can just send them if you want. I, I stopped sending them cause yeah. I thought it was going to be one or two, but now it's been like seven. So, you know, yeah, I don't see the JJ chili dog ones. And I, so you just do it and you tell me when we're done. Okay. Go for it. All right. Uh, $5 from Dylan Fuller. Uh, I joined Dave's patron. You should do, you should do because I can guarantee it makes you at least 20 times terms and condition apply have to be at least 4% cool to qualify. Thank you for putting terms and conditions there. New Zealand, 17 bucks from Lemon Peel Angelfish. Much love to Dave X. Dave X is Dave's alter ego. Uh, $10 from Slackback. Ditto to Doolin Fooler. So endorsement. Yep. Dylan's one of the moderators and called in today and uh, gave us something really fun and interesting to talk about. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff I love. $10 from CyberKid. Much love to Dave. What an inspiration he is. Amen. Which, by the way, uh, if I haven't done this little miniature rant on the word amen in a while, here you go. Amen is not a religious term or it doesn't have anything to do at all with affirming any religion. It just means assent to or agreement to the proposition. And I like that there's a word like that. When you say something cool and I'm like, hell yeah, I can also be like, amen, brother. And 
I know that it annoys the crap out of religious people when I do that. And they get, they're like, oh my gosh, he said amen. It's like when I say Jesus Christ, they're like, oh, you really believe when that's not what that means. And so feel free to use amen as an agreement assent anytime you want to. It's, it's a perfectly useful term and it annoys the crap out of religious people when you do that. Amen. On that note, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to tune into the other shows this week. I'll be back um, next week, but not this one. Thanks, Eric, for, for agreeing to come on here on short notice. Dave, oh. please get to feeling better. We, look, we love you. We look forward to you being back next week to take over this show because it, it's, it's needed and you're needed. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye, folks. Hey, he's got different music. Socks the Kid super chatted at the end. Oh my God. You guys always wait until the wrap of time. Ah! I wonder if I'll hear this music in porn the way I heard music for my show in a porn advertisement. That's a fun thing to do. Thanks to yeah. all our Patreon producers. Patreon.com. Call